Hello everyone and welcome to Being Earthquake Ready. This is a Windsor talk, one of our monthly talks. Um, it's nice to see some of you guys repeating coming to our talks, so thank you. Um, I am Diana Borges. I am a professional geologist. To give you a little background, um, well, I, I got my degree in 81, but I was doing uh, environmental geology, mostly investigation and cleanups of contaminated sites. Uh, that was my, my career background. Um, in 2017, I sold my portion of a small consulting firm and then eventually got into emergency preparedness. So, and here I am. Um, so I want to go over um, some of the faults in our area, some uh, basic understanding about faulting, but then get into emergency preparedness. But also, this is going to be a little different because I want to give some practical tips that you guys can take home and actually use. So let's get started. So just some basics. Um, an earthquake is what happens when the ground shakes and it's usually two plates of crust. So the earth has a crust and there are plates that were in the ocean floor and the continents move on. And they were all, to, were all together a billion years ago in one landmass, and then they started moving around. You might have heard plate tectonics. Um, they're still moving. They are where they are now, completely separate with oceans in between, but they're still moving. And most of the earthquakes here in our area is because the Pacific plate gets subducted underneath the North Continental plate here. And, so, and that's where we have the San Andreas Fault. So there's a um, there's San Andreas Fault, I'll show you a picture, and then there's the San Andreas Fault Zone. So an earthquake is just what happens when those plates move and they slip. Um, they could also happen from um, things like volcanic magma movement underneath. And as we know now, then sometimes um, human activities cause it, like frac fracking and all that type of thing. Um, a magnitude is just how strong it is, and it's on a logarithmic scale. Um, uh, the other thing I want to point out is an epicenter. So the rupture usually happens underground. We, we call an epicenter, which is where on surface, directly above where that ruptures. So when you, we say it's so far from the epicenter, it's not actually where that rupture in the ground. That's just where it is on the surface. Let's go to the next slide. So this image kind of gives you an idea of how frequent certain faults are as far as the magnitude and then what the energy is that is released. So um, earthquakes happen all the time, all over the world. Earthquakes happen at the geysers constantly because of um, the activity at the geysers that we're doing. But then also there's a lava field nearby. So like I said, lava moving and things like that um, causes different pressures to happen and earthquakes. So as you can see, you know, this is the magnitude. So at a two, a million of them happen a year, constantly happening. And as we go up, um, Actually, a six is, is considered the start of a strong earthquake. And if any of you were around in 2014 when the Napa one happened, that was a six. So that was a strong earthquake. And then you can see about 200 of those happen every year. And the energy equivalent is a Hiroshima atomic bomb. So there's that much energy that was released. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that, um, so the difference between each hold number is um, about 10,000 times. So this is a logarithmic, so it's a tenfold scale. It's not just like one more than the other. So that's why when we go from like a five to a six, the amount of energy and the potential damage is a much higher. So this is a map of Sonoma County and the faults in our area. Um, 
the main faults are the San Andreas, which is the peak coming through here. The San Andreas runs almost the length of California. Um, some of it's on the land and some of it goes off into the ocean. The other faults are um, closer to us and I'll show you the next slide. I just blew that map up so you can see our area better. So Windsor is up there. You can see just under 101. Um, and the green line is the Hillsburg Fault. That's what's right next to us, just east of us, going up. Um, beneath that, this line, this is the Rogers Creek Fault, which I'll talk about in a little while. Um, that's probably the fault in our area that has the most potential to do damage to um, our area. This shows um, the significant earthquakes that have happened in the past in our area. Uh, you can see that uh, up in the upper right, all that area is up in the geysers area. And then um, the next area is down here, major one, and that is on the Rogers Creek Fault that I mentioned. And if you notice, there's nothing on the San Andreas near us, right? So like I said, the Rogers Creek Fault I want to talk about because it is um, the highest threat. So just recently they've discovered that the Rogers Creek Fault is actually connected to the Hayward Fault, which is in the Bay Area underneath the San Pablo Bay. So they are connected. Um, the Hayward Fault has a high potential to have a strong earthquake. So if an earthquake even happens down in the Bay Area on the Hayward, there's a good chance that we're going to be affected up here. So the, as it shows, there's a 33% chance of a magnitude 6.7 earthquake happening um, along that system, Hayward, Rogers Creek, uh, before 2043. And uh, I can tell you, I was just looking online for information, and um, I had not seen that. Um, they say if one happens on that, that to be ready for weeks of aftershocks. Not just a day or two, which is what we usually happen, um, but weeks. So um, we can prepare, we can re reduce risk, but then there's also what is the factors that cause the damage? Certain things we have no control over. So obviously the size of the magnitude, how, large, how strong the earthquake is, where it is, where it is, the distance winds are to the epicenter, but also how deep it is. Because what happens is when it happens, the shock waves um, flow through soil or rock, whatever material is down there. And dependent what it is flowing through depends on the velocity and things. So there's, there's a lot of different factors. Um, the other thing that happens is uh, our homes. How well are they structurally built for seismic activity? Um, you know, newer homes, obviously, building codes have changed. But older homes um, may not be uh, as earthquake resistant. So potential damage um, to homes. Uh, things that are very vulnerable are especially brick chimneys. Anything brick, think about it. You know, you're, they're held together with, with mortar. And uh, that's going to crack when all the shaking. So uh, brick chimneys um, often do crumble and come down, and they're also a very uh, potential hazard to stay away from. The other thing are um, porches and things like that that are not directly connected to the home. Say you built uh, an addition home, um, additional porch off something, or you have an overhang patio, those things are not secure to the house very well. Those things will come down. 
And as you can see here, see the, um, the damage right here? That's because it's not um, a structural built as well. Um, other potential impacts are bridges. This is um, the NASA 6.0 earthquake damage that happened to um, bridges there, overpasses, utility lines. Uh, every utility line, whether it's in ground or above, can potentially be damaged. Um, underneath, it's ground movement. So th they're not going, they're not flexible and they're going to uh, possibly get damaged, and that's everything. Water, sewer, communication, uh, gas lines, everything. Trees, sometimes trees fall down too, so those are also um, a potential hazard to be aware of. And uh, some things that happen, um, Transportation gets blocked because our roads uh, can get blocked with debris, but our roads can also buckle like this and crack. And this can be in an area where everything looks fine. Um, you know, you're driving along and then you just happen to come across this because maybe it's the certain soil that's underneath there, um, the slope of it, or different things like that. Uh, delay in first responders. Um, in a very large, strong earthquake, there's going to be a lot of damage and a lot of need. Um, anyone see recently, like pictures from Taiwan, or you've seen other Japan, some of those other areas where um, massive destruction. Uh, so first responders aren't going to be able to get to us, and that's why we have to also be prepared ourselves. Um, the other thing I want to point out is, which is, is really obvious, um, earthquakes are a lot different than wildfires. So, except for 2017, wildfires we usually get a warning. We know they're coming. Um, an earthquake, uh, it can happen and be over in less than a minute with no warnings. So, it's nothing that we can do to other than protect ourselves right at that moment. Um, disruption of utilities, like I mentioned, but also fires often erupt um, because gas lines break. In 1906 San Francisco earthquake, most of the destruction actually was from fires, not at the actual earthquake. Communications go down. Um, you know, people also get trapped inside buildings when um, some of the walls happen to collapse. And the one thing I want to show, I, I, I gave you all a little whistle to have. So, um, besides just every day, if you go hiking, you go for walks, you can take your whistle and, and call for help if you need. But they say if you actually get trapped in a building from debris and things like that, do not scream. Because there's going to be a lot of things in the air flowing around. And when you suck in to scream, you're going to bring all that into your lungs. So instead, you use a whistle. And hopefully you're nearby your whistle when you need it. But um, <laughs> that is what they say to do. Uh, the other thing they say is um, you can tap on a pipe or something like that to make noise. But the screaming um, is preferred not to because uh, you could cause more harm to yourself. And then, as you know, medical facilities will get overloaded if uh, there's, you know, depending on the need. So, when an earthquake happens, or I'll talk about later, we get an earthquake alert, you have seconds to respond. <clears throat> And you need to respond where you are. Do not try to go to another room. A lot of times uh, people are injured because they're trying to get to somewhere. Um, you definitely do not go outside. Outside has more potential hazards than staying inside. And then you also have that potential of you walking there getting um, hurt. So 
an earthquake, big, strong earthquake, you're not going to be able to walk. Um, you might crawl, but you're not going to be able to walk because everything's moving and you, you're going to fall. Um, so if um, you have a table or something like that, a desk or something like that, that's the ideal thing. You get underneath, so it's duck, cover, hold on. So you, you get underneath and you hold on to the legs so that you move with the table. Okay? Ideally, you want to be 10 feet away from a window because in case that shatters, ideally also if there's something hanging above you that's not where you really want to be, you have a ceiling fan or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> if you are in bed, you stay in bed, cover your head with a pillow. Uh, I've seen two different uh, suggestions. One is that you just lay there or the other one you curl up in a fetal position. Um, personally, I am, I curl up in a fetal position and I can tell you now because of, I've had an alert, uh, I, my muscle memory is there, I automatically go, I don't even think about it anymore. But um, for me, uh, I have a ceiling fan near the, the uh, edge of my bed. So curling up is less surface area potential for something to fall on me. How about crawling under the bed? If you ever time. Uh, you have space under your bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you do? Oh. Anything, yeah. <laughs> I've just never seen a bed that hot. Um, if you can get under something, yes. Yes. Um, if you don't have something to crawl under, the next best thing is to, uh, if you can, you sit against the wall. <laughs> sit against the wall and you cover what you had. The most important thing is to cover your head. Um, the other scenarios um, are as, uh, if you're outside, get away from power lines, trees, brick chimneys, uh, anything like that. And then you drop cover, hold on. Um, if, even if it's like just sitting there on the ground, away from everything, and you cover your head. Um, driving, if you're driving and it happens, you pull over to the side as soon as you can, safe. Put the car in its um, park, emergency brake on, keep your seatbelt on. So you're staying in there and you're not getting tossed around. Uh, those in wheelchairs, um, you put the brake on, you do the, the, the cover, hold on. Um, and then anywhere else like that. So, we just had an earthquake. What are you going to do? Drop cover, hold on. But, but what does that mean, drop cover, hold on? What are you going to do? Get under the table. And? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, grab the legs. Right. I strongly suggest that you practice this at home, in, in wherever it is you're going to. Uh, I can tell you that uh, in my living room, I always thought I'm getting under the coffee table. Um, but it was a while before I actually tried it. It's not easy getting under a low coffee table <laughs> at all. And legs are in the way, you have to scoot around. It's not like getting under a kitchen table and you jump in there. So I, I suggest that you do it. Um, the other thing I want to do is, in this room right now, Point out some of the concerns that there would be. Windows. Windows. Yes. Ceiling tiles. Ceiling mm -hmm. tiles. Probably the speakers. Speakers. How about the TV? Yeah, TV. Um, so this, I don't know how attached that is there to the wall. So we'll get into um, securing items to the wall. Um, but in here, if for some reason the tables weren't out, what I would do, I'd lean against, sit against that wall back there and cover my head. There's nothing on that wall that's going to fall, it's going to really harm me. Um, and you're, you're away from the windows and those things. It's something to consider. Should you be at the senior center, we do have an earthquake through the water right there, 
water would possibly be coming into this room at the same time with it sloshing back and forth. So something else to be aware of as well while you're in here. Yes. Thanks, Crystal. So what can you do now to prepare, like I said, practice the drop cover, hold on. Um, assess your home, your garage, office, just like we just did here, and I have another image I'll show. But um, try to get into the mindset of looking around where you are. Not just your home, but um, when you go places. Uh, you come here often, know what you're going to do if there's something that happens. Uh, keep um, sturdy shoes and a flashlight by your bed in case it's at night, dark, when something happens. Um, in the Napa earthquake, most of the injuries were from people getting cut with glass afterwards, walking, trying to clean up and things like that. So you'll have one also um, when you do clean up, heavy gloves so you don't cut yourself. Um, consider getting earthquake insurance. Uh, I can tell you, I, I finally did. I didn't for a long time either, um, but I have got insurance. And then those houses, especially that are older, um, consider retrofitting. So there are ways to um, uh, uh, embrace um, and make it sturdier. I can't remember the word. Um, and there is a program right here, Earth Brace and Bolt program, um, earthquakeauthority.com. They do have a reimbursement program, but I believe it's for homes that are uh, was built in 1980 and older. Um, you know, like I said, building codes changed. So this image is from FEMA, and it kind of goes through and shows you uh, different areas to look for. Um, so you can see. Different areas where you've got the ceiling fan, you've got the chandelier, those type of things. Um, you can actually even secure those better than just the normal uh, fixtures. Things hanging up on the walls, your pictures, your, your TVs, things like that. Um, cabinets, uh, you can secure those, the doors, so they don't fly open and things fall out. Um, what else? Your refrigerator. I'm trying to look at other things that we haven't talked about. Uh, oh, your water heater. Water heater. Yeah, I do have a picture for the water heater. So um, I'll get into pictures later. Um, garage it had a lot of potentials of things falling down and, and some potential hazards. So securing items, anything that is large that can fall and hurt you, basically, right? You secure them into a stud in the wall, not just the drywall, it's not going to work, but you, you put it into um, a stud. There's a lot of different types of um, devices out there that you can buy, um, but this is just shows you one there. Um, so everything, like I said, anything that is large enough to fall down or the other thing to consider is if it's valuable to you and you don't want to lose it. So emergencies, uh, all these disasters, the wildfires, all these things, you know, to be realistic, we are not going to get rid of all the risks. It's just impossible to get rid of all the risks. So for me, it's a matter of reducing the risks and which ones am I willing to live with? What am I okay with? And I, so what I've gone through is, you know, those things that are the most concerned for me, I take care of those things. So when the shaking stops, and when we're sure it's the shaking, and not just the, you know, aftershocks, because expect aftershocks every time. And whenever there is an aftershock, you do the same thing, drop, cover, hold on. Um, you want to go through and assess your house, but you first is your own safety. That's why you, you have the um, sturdy shoes, gloves, anything like that. Um, protect yourself. 
So things that you might want to look at for uh, uh, is things that are maybe hanging precariously now. So maybe they're at the edge of a cabinet or when you open your cabinets, go very slow, peek in because some things might be at the edge and if you open wide, they're all going to fall out. So be aware of shifting things when you're going through the house. The other thing is the um, spills, any uh, fluids that might have, chemicals that might have spilled. When you uh, pick those up, have protection and uh, put them everything into you know appropriate containers and things like that. Uh, check your emergency alerts. Um, go to your radio, see what's happening. Uh, we have internet. Check it on the internet. What's going on? <laughs> the internet doesn't go down. Yeah. Um, so the other, um, like I said, gas lines sometimes break, not just gas lines in the, the um, ground, but in your, in your house, your building. Uh, so you, if you smell gas, you turn it off. Do not automatically turn off your gas though because there's an earthquake, okay? You are not supposed to turn it back on. pg &E has to come out and turn it on. But if you do smell gas, you turn it off and then you leave, get out of your house. Uh, use stairs, don't use the elevator. And then when everything is okay in your house, you know, to a point, you check on your neighbors when it's safe, okay? But don't just run outside to check on your neighbors because there might be another uh, aftershock and then something falls on you. So be aware of, of potential additional situations, okay? Uh, there is uh, um, California Office of Emergency Service actually do, does say stay in the house. Don't even go check on your neighbors. But as we know, um, in certain situations, you know, we are going to be the only one there for each other. So when it is safe, you're comfortable with, with you know, there won't be any additional hazards, then check on your neighbors. Or if there's phones, start calling each other. So I just want to show some products that you may want to consider. Um, <clears throat> these three are different ways to secure large items to the wall, your bookcase and things like that. Um, over here are straps that you can uh, secure your television. These are for cabinets. So I have researched cabinets a lot because um, I know if uh, they're cumbersome for me, at some point I'm going to stop using them. I know that. So what, what's going to work for me? And what works, you have to figure out what type of handles you have. Do you have a single handle or do you have double? Are they uh, handles or are they knobs? So certain things work for certain setups. Um, this one over here, um, no, this one right here. This one actually is my cabinet. <clears throat> so I found out after I bought them, uh, my handles are actually a little too close. So they're really, it's kind of difficult to get in and out of it. Um, this is in uh, my laundry room. I bought those hoping that I was going to my kitchen. All my kitchen, I have a lot of kitchen cabinets. Um, but I haven't done it because they're awkward. So I can tell you, I still don't have them on my kitchen cabinet because I, I, I haven't found that one that, that works for me. And also the, these work perfectly, but I really don't want to drill holes in all of my cabinets. The one on the right is my garage. Those work really well if you have that type of a setup. So Quick Hold has a lot of different um, things you can buy to help you secure things. Uh, this potty hole is great. Uh, you just take a little bit and you stick it underneath and, and push it down and you can get it off really easy by turning. Um, you're going to want, this is a gas shut off wrench, there's a lot of different sizes. 
This is the one I have. It's actually a multi-tool that you can use. But you want something, this, this end here is what shuts off your gas. So your gas valve has um, something that comes out like this. It's not like that. And you, you're going to turn it so it's perpendicular to the line. So this is the pipe. You want it this way. That shuts it off. And keep something right next to the, uh, the gas shut off so that you're not searching for it. So I have, mine is in a uh, Ziploc bag <coughs> right next to it. Um, these are straps you can actually buy to help secure things in. The top is my house. Um, this was after I actually took things down and made it better. And at that point, I was okay with those large bases up there. When I said, how much risk are you willing to live with? Um, because I was okay if they fell down and they broke. But then I realized, they're heavy. They're going to put dents in my floor. So now those are gone. Uh, so these are, this is all my house. My, so up here, the top is my shed. Um, my shed was a mess also. My garage and my shed were just disasters waiting. And so I finally secured the, the two by four, bolted it against the, the shed. And those um, holders there are very strong. If it's a, a huge earthquake, it may not hold it, but they are going to hold pretty well. So you have to actually move the lever to get it out. This is the bench underneath where I stored uh, chemicals. I have a bungee cord strapped there. And you can't see it, but I also put a um, fishing line that I bolted in um, to keep it so it won't slip out. And then this is just uh, an example of how to secure your uh, water heater. Um, but suggestions of breakables and chemicals, you know, store it lower. Um, the other thing, just to remind, uh, chlorine and ammonia, you store separately because if they mix together, it's chlorine, uh, ammonia chlorine, ammonia chloride, chlorine gas, ammonia chlorine gas um, is very toxic. Uh, this is my garage. So up here, um, I get bungee cords, but then on this side is my water heater. So I wanted to secure that more, so I put a board across, bolted that in to keep the, uh, a, a side there to prevent things from moving. Here, um, the pegboard, I had things up there, and I knew those were just waiting to be projectiles right into the car. Uh, so. What I ended up doing was, <clears throat> those things that I use often are in this basket here. And the basket is bolted to the top of this bench. Uh, on your uh, shelves, uh, those should be secured also, otherwise they could possibly tumble onto your cars. Um, you can see the strap on top, so I use a ratchet strap just to hold it all in. And then bungee cords to hold the things on the shelf. And I got very creative with Velcro and bungee cords. Um, so this is my shed. <clears throat> this actually, uh, trimmer did not even fit in my shed well, but now it's up, it's Velcroed up top, and it's just going to move with the shed. Um, this strap I use to keep the bike up, um, and the bungee cord over there holds the ladder up. So, April is National Emergency uh, Earthquake Preparedness Month. And because of that, Sonoma County holds its shakeout this month. Um, you'll also hear in October of a, a, a worldwide shakeout. Um, but Sonoma County has changed it um, to be inconsistent 
to be consistent with April, but also because in October we are more focused on wildfires. So now we can focus on earthquakes a little bit. So um, I gave you all a handout um, for the shakeout. You can uh, just do it on your own or you can register. They are giving away um, a go bag if you're interested um, that you might win. But it's an opportunity to do the drop cover hold on. Earthquake alerts. Uh, let me start with the two at the bottom because those are, these are automatic. So on your cell phone, unless you've um, disconnected the Wi-Fi, the wireless emergency alert will come through for an earthquake if they have a warning ahead of time to give it to you. Okay. Uh, but it's only for five magnitude and higher. And then um, those of us that have an Android, um, the Androids also have an alert system that, that comes with it. But the MyShake is an app that you can actually mm -hmm. download that's free. And you can go to, that's the uh, website, and you download that. Um, I do want to stress, um, don't rely on the app. No matter what app you have, don't rely on it because of the technology, a lot of times we get an alert after the shaking already starts. And I'll, I'll show you, um, I'll go through this, why. Um, and if you get an alert, it's not like a wildfire alert. You know, we get a wildfire alert when we're used to, you know, your phone's over there, you walk over to your phone, um, okay, what's going on now? You know, and we look it up and then um, you get, an earthquake alert, you immediately drop cover, hold on. If by chance your phone's right there, grab it on the way, but you still drop cover, hold on. Um, and this is the reason. So this is the epicenter here. So the earthquake happens. Um, an earthquake, there's two waves that are sent out. One's a P wave, the primary wave, and one's a secondary wave, the second wave. So this is the one that causes all the damage. The second one. The sensors pick up the first one. And you can see there's not a whole lot of time in between the waves. There's a lot of different factors of, of how fast they move. But the sensors then go to um, an alert system where they immediately, their, their computers do some analysis, and then they send it out to phones, your phone service, right? If you happen to be, let's just say, you happen to be right here, that's where you live, these waves are going to get to you before. If you live out here, right, there's more time before the waves actually get to you. So that's why right now, at least the way the technology is, uh, we can't rely on it. It does, at times, give us that early warning that we need. But even if it is, it's still going to be seconds. In an earthquake, um, chances are you're not going to do any evacuations. You might, after a while, leave if you decide that you're, um, you're uncomfortable staying there, for one thing. Or if there's some damage to your house that you, you want to leave. But, if there's a strong earthquake, chances are we're going to have to shelter in place. Like I said, roads might be blocked. Um, first responders can't get to us. Well, we're not going to be able to get out either. So you need to have supplies for seven days. Um, for you, your family, your pets, everything. I accidentally pushed that, didn't I? Um, I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, the listos fold out that I gave you does have a list of things in there, but we're also going to, in our uh, July talk, it's going to be go back, shelter in place, and evacuation, so we'll go into more detail on that. I want to just touch real quick, so tsunamis and landslides can be triggered from earthquakes. 
tsunamis, we don't have to worry about it over here. It's just over at the coast. But if you happen to be at the coast, uh, I just want to go over it. So if you are at the coast and you feel a strong earthquake, or if um, the ocean starts doing some weird things. You know, the water goes out real fast, or it comes in, it starts acting really weird. You hear noise way out, there's this, this really loud noise. You need to get out of there. And it's, it's getting up, okay? If you can, you get up elevation higher than the waves. So if you've been out the coast, there's little tsunami signs now. Have you seen those? To show you how um, high you should be. Um, but either way, if you're, you can't get high, just run and get out. Um, landslides, not a lot we can do if they're a fast slide. Um, but just be aware um, if some certain slopes, especially if there's been some movement on the earth already, it's a good possibility that some more could slide. So I want to talk about a couple uh, things coming up in May. Two events. The first one is Windsor's having its second Pancake Breakfast Safety Fair. Any of you go to it last time, last year? Well, do you have the opportunity this year? Um, it's at <laughs> Kaiser Park. Uh, it's a free pancake breakfast. The um, Summit County Fire District puts it on, and they've done uh, a pancake breakfast for years. Uh, we just started adding a safe little safety fair that you can um, come in and see some of the moves. The Fire District Safety Expo, this is the fourth year we're having this, and it's the largest in-person emergency preparedness event in Sonoma County. Um, this is free also. It's uh, May 19th from 10 to 3. Uh, in the morning, there's an earthquake disaster simulation where firefighters and certain CART volunteers are going to be simulating rescue of humans and animals. Uh, there's going to be a uh, Henry One helicopter and Sonoma County One helicopter. Both are going to come land and do little demos. We have a landscape demo coming up um, and about 65 different um, exhibitors uh, and free lunch, at least while supplies last. So I am excited to say that I have the rest of the talks for this year scheduled. I did it again. Huh? Here we are. I need to stop doing that. Um, this is the schedule for upcoming. Um, right now, it should be good. I have. To, I need to get one more speaker, but chances are this is this is it. So um, May is animal safety. June wildfire. Like I said, July is going to be evacuation. Go back and shelter in the place. August is going to be what you mentioned about internet. So in addition to, Christine is going to be one of the speakers, how, what does the town do for communications? We have our county communications person going to be here. They're going to tell you what they do, but then also when there's no internet, where there's no cell phone service, mm -hmm. what can we do? Um, September is going to be a combined CPR and uh, situational awareness self-defense. So we'll break up into groups and we're going to do that. Um, October is self-care during emergencies. So um, not just being aware of what goes on. You know, a lot of us have um, PTSD, whether or not we're aware of it. So anyone who's been here since 2017 has been impacted by wildfires. So we're going to go over that. And then uh, November is uh, staying healthy. So these are all on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. here? We're not Tuesdays anymore. We oh. had to shift some. Okay. All right. So um, through July is Tuesdays. Through July is Tuesday. And then it's either they're Mondays, except CPR is Friday. So 1 p.m. here. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. stays the same. Yeah. yeah. So during an earthquake, um, your neighborhood groups are important, like I've been saying. Knowing your neighbors and being prepared together. 
because uh, those are the people that are going to be there for you and you're going to be for, there for each other. You know, so meet your neighbors, um, get your contact information so that you can contact each other. If for some reason that you, you can't get outside physically to them, maybe you can talk on the phone. But your resources, you will know who has certain things. If there's, um, maybe there's a nurse in your area, you'll know those type of things ahead of time. Um, and then uh, you can always email me at windsor underscore cope at yahoo.com if you have any questions after this. And then um, Windsor Cope, which is Communities Organized for Prepare for Emergency. We're part of Northern Sonora County Cope, which is a nonprofit. And on their website, there's a lot of different information you can go to. And of course, you can always go to socoemergency.org, uh, our county. And that is it. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, does the town of Windsor have any designated emergency shelter centers that would be set up if there was a devastating earthquake and we could not live in our homes, such as here or Brooks Creek School or you know the community center? So we have a, a, a relationship with the school district. And so right now, the Windsor High School has been designated as the main shelter here. However, with my work, I am trying to identify other areas as well. Um, I did speak to a Windsor resident, Julian Cohen, and he is, has a brilliant idea when he's working with another uh, individual of identifying vacant commercial locations and establishing partnerships with those private owners to house those that do not have a location to go to. Our road, roadways, infrastructure, are damaged to have isolated areas that we can go. Brilliant. So. That's another area that I'm starting to work with, and he's working with as Okay, well. that's great, except that if we're living on the east side of Windsor and we physically can't get to the west side of Windsor, then there needs to be something over here. Yes, and my hope is, since we have four quadrants for our evacuation areas, that we identify areas within. Right. So it's easier for walking if we have to, if we can't do the roadways, pathways, any way to get there. That's a hope. Okay, and then one other question. Yeah. A really great little giveaway tool idea for the town of Windsor would be those earthquake shutoff valve gas valves. Gas valves. Yeah, okay. with That's the town of Windsor idea. printed on them or something. Yep. You could give them away at music nights on Thursday nights or something. That's a great idea. Okay, thank you. Yes. So would the senior center be one of those places? I know you can hook up to a generator here. It's a modern higher level HVAC system, right? And mm -hmm. people know where it is, especially seniors know where it is. Right. So it seems like this would be in one of the ideal spots. Um, it hasn't been identified as one, but I, I, you're not the only one that has brought that to my attention. I think it, it's more familiar for some, as well as it's identified as a safe haven as well during the uh, summer period for the cooling center. So those are areas that we are trying to identify. Um, I was looking at the USGS volcano website, and of course it said that the volcano that would most likely erupt in California would be the Lake County one. Um, how, how does the volcano erupting correlate with earthquakes, or does it? Because of the, you know, the land shifting and everything? Volcanoes can uh, cause earthquakes. Like I said, the magma moving un underground yeah, it can uh, change the pressure, and then the pressure has to get released somehow. Um, to be honest, I'm not too worried about volcanoes in the area. You know, you need to look at it. So when we say it's an active volcano, uh, you need to look at when's the last time it actually erupted. So we're talking, it's a very long time before we consider them dormant. Any other questions? 
So many of the homes in Windsor are built on a slab foundation mm -hmm. rather than tr the traditional perimeter foundation. Does that, how does that matter in an earthquake? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know most of them were slab. Mine's not yeah. perimeter. I thought most of them were not slab. Because we have adobe clay, and what happens, adobe clay shrinks and, and it does this type of thing, and you'll get cracks and slabs. So usually they're not, most of them are not slab on grade, is my understanding. Depends <laughs> where you put the section you live in. Um, what will happen if you get cracks in the foundation? Yeah. We'll go to the building department. We can discuss it with Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up. I just thought it would be Any other questions? Okay, I want to point out some handouts that I gave you. Like I said, the, the listos, the uh, large uh, foldout. Um, you can look into here for go bag information, shelter in place, uh, have your plan. Um, I have a couple handouts here that I got from uh, Earthquake County Alliance. Uh, this is uh, about telling you why you should protect your home. Um, and then this one is the seven steps uh, to help you um, stay safe and protect the home. And there's other, uh, a lot of other handouts that we gave you. Christina has some there from the town. Uh, and, uh, I have some additional uh, things out there. So uh, we did pass out a survey. Please uh, complete that. Let us know what you thought. Um, anything you want to hear in the future, that type of thing, we look at those, and I do add certain things. So thank you, everyone, for coming, and I hope to see you next month for animal safety. A uh, little plug for that one. Um, Halter Project's going to be there at North uh, County Bay, North Bay County uh, Animal Services, and they are bringing children animals for us to cover. So, yes. so thank you. Good Thank job. you. And if you're